Hello everyone, welcome to QNAP Live Broadcast on Zen. And uh, according to the latest version of our QTS operation system, uh, QTS 4.3.5 is going to launch to the market. So we have our PM today, Repo, and he will tell us the new things about our snapshot. Well, last week we have been talking about the storage system and we also talked about several things about the new snapshot. But today, this episode, we will also show you the brand new thing and the whole information of our new snapshot. And uh, we can go into the slides and we check on the title of today. <clears throat> okay, the title will be Improved Snapshot Functions for a Greater Peace of Mind. Well, um, I feel a little bit of curious about how snapshot can bring us a peace of mind. So uh, I believe that there are several new things which will like give us some, like a fresh air for the snapshot. So uh, we will check on the uh, several main functions today. The first thing is that the local snapshot introduction and usage. So uh, if you are a new user of the QNAP NAS and you don't really understand about what can snapshot help you or how does it work? Well, we will talk about everything right here. And the second part is the snapshot space, a location, and the advanced features. Well, basically, we will have several, like three or four new advanced features for the snapshot, which is the latest thing in the newer uh, QTS version. So we will also talk about that. And the last part is the snapshot replica and uh, restoration from a remote NAS. Well, in the past, no, currently, uh, for the for the snapshot replica, we can do the restore on the other side. But uh, according to the, the the word, I take this as we can now uh, restore the, the the local NAS by the uh, replica snapshot from the remote side, right? Yes. So basically, I think this will be the three new things. And we will go to the first part, which we will introduce the snapshot, and we will let you know how the snapshot works and how can we use the snapshot to do the uh, local restoration. Okay, so uh, tell us about that. Okay, thank you for the host sense, mm -hmm. the introduction of the snapshot. Uh, today we will go through all the feature and basic function about mm -hmm. snapshot. And first of all, I want to uh, show you our architecture chart that our snapshot support all the uh, storage configuration on the storage pool, which is a uh, thick volume, thin volume, mm -hmm. and as as long. And we also provide uh, guarantee snapshot space. As you can see, because our snapshot is storing on the storage pool, so all the volume and long can share a single snapshot space. And if you have using thin volume mm -hmm. or thin as as long, you can also reserve a guarantee snapshot space. So ensure they always have space to store snapshot. So this is a brief introduction of our our volume snapshot. Mm -hmm. And most of all, why uh, why we have uh, introduced the snapshot function into our QSTS system, of course, is because uh, to reduce the RTO, which we also know as uh, recover time objective. According to Taiwan's famous magazine survey, is that they have a uh, sixteen percent of the business user have a remote backup backup job in their production site, and half of them wish that their backup plan can recover their data within one hours. But actually, as you can see, the number that uh, half of the enterprise customer uh, they will require more than one day to recover the data from backup site through mm -hmm. different uh, backup solution. So we see that uh, re recover time is really important, not only for business users, but also for home user, because when we have suffered a data loss, for example, down to the attack of ransomware, we will all become very, uh, uh, very uh, anger and maybe very upset, and we want to recover, re recover our data back as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So the major reason why we introduced Nesha is to reduce the RTO really need is recover time. So how snapshot can help you reduce your RTO? The major reasons, uh, as you see in the chart, is that unlike different, uh, unlike the file based backup method, uh, snapshot is you is forcing your data block directly mm -hmm. when you taking a snapshot. 
So here, let us just see the chop directly. When you have a volume with no snapshots, without snapshot, you see that when we modify the data, for example, from A, B, C to A plus, B plus, C plus, it overrides the file directly in the block level. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have the snapshot, the data block A, B, C, D, E is being forced by the snapshots. And when you need to modify those data block, uh, the storage system will find new data block and write those data directly. Mm -hmm. So this is how snapshot work is not overwriting the backup file or copy the file to the other place. It's just forcing uh, the original block. And then when you require to recover the data, uh, the file system with snapshot can simply change the file system link from the original modified block to back to the original blue block. So in this chart, we can see that the major benefit of snapshot is that, for example, when you need to uh, recover a volume with uh, 300 gigabyte of uh, data, you can simply uh, uh, mount the snapshot that you have in the middle of this picture, that you already have that snapshot which contains some file or that have been modified before, and it just changed the file system link and mount the snapshot. So, for example, if you need to recover three three hundred gigabyte of data using the copy local copy, you may need to take half half hour. But with this refer action by remount the snapshot original data block, you only need three minutes to recover your data. This is one of the uh, most important benefit of snapshot. Mm -hmm. Further on, snapshot also help you to reduce your RPO for two reasons. First of all, because compared to uh, copy data to different location, uh, freezing data block is more easy to uh, accomplish and it can be done in few seconds. And secondly, because the snapshot is a differential backup solution. So as you can see in the chart, uh, when you have a, a, com uh, a backup compared to a snapshot, snapshot 2 compared to backup 2, if you want to backup the modified data in backup 2, you will still need to backup the whole data. Well, in the snapshot 2, you only need to uh, reserve uh, additionally uh, data block space to store the modified data. So using Snapshot allow you to have a more recover point and also help you to reduce your RPO, which is uh, uh, how close your last backup to your the time when the disaster ha mm -hmm. happened, which will we shorter, uh, we lower RPO your uh, cost for restoring uh, from the backup will become uh, lower. And finally, uh, may, many users have asking about us for the snapshot feature because it's a, a major tool how to form the last protection line against ransomware. We know ransomware is operate in file level, so when he's when the ransomware see a file, mm -hmm. it will automatically uh, encrypt the file. But because snapshot is stored in the block level, as we see that snapshot is stored in the storage pool and that, that cannot be generally recognized uh, from the file system directly. So when um, if your NAS is unfortunately be attacked by ransomware and your data has been infected, your snapshot will still uh, be intact and you can use your snapshot to recover all your data. Okay. Okay. So after seeing all those benefits of snapshot, mm -hmm. because many uh, many storage vendors provide a snapshot function and how is our snapshot feature different from the other vendors? We have uh, four major points. And first of all, uh, compared to our uh, another uh, major storage vendor, which is Nudge DSN, uh, we provide our snapshot on all the storage configuration at storage pool, which including very importantly, the cloud level, I discuss it long because we know many enterprise users might still wish to use block place I discuss it long for stable storage. Yes. And secondly, while uh, three years ago, people may say uh, our user interface may be not so uh, user friendly, right now in this few years, we have continually improved our uh, interface, especially in Snapshot. So later I will demo that how our user interface has been integrated with okay. the snapshot for home user 
to easily use the snapshot taking and management and restoring uh, like can uh like it's very easy to do mm -hmm. and certainly uh we are using a mature ext4 file system which is also different from, from the other storage vendor who use uh more uh the other more newer uh file system uh btrfs for example uh we believe that uh, while those new uh file system provide many uh new uh nature feature mm -hmm. we still develop the snapshot on ES4 because it's uh, more mature and have a higher performance uh, uh, system. so we have to do this uh, we are unique technology and to provide a uh, snapshot outside of a uh, volume which also help not only it has a better uh, overall performance but you also allow IT manager to easily monitor the snapshot space and finally, we support our signature feature on uh, a wild level of our uh, QA model. As you can see, that because every uh, signature needs to take some memory to, to be mounted, so user can use it when needed. We also provide a flexible aspect for different uh, model to utilize the signature function. For example, you can see that starting from the 4.3.4, all of our model last starting from on model can also mm -hmm. utilize the snapshot feature. Yes. Yes. So here is just some simple step from the beginning to easily taking snapshot. As you can see that because snapshot is a built-in function mm -hmm. inside our NAS system, user don't need to uh, does not need to install a traditionally app. He just open store your snapshot and select the volume online he want and take or manage snapshot directly. Those are some simple steps for user to take his nature inside our NAS. And besides from uh, the building app, it also provides us the benefit to deeply integrate the snapshot function. We are another major uh, building app, which is called FileStation, because we believe that it should be more easily for user to uh, browse and recover data from snapshot if they can uh, operate a snapshot directly in FileStation. So here you can see our snapshot our file station can easily browse in and recover the file when required. And finally, for this first chapter, uh, we discuss about the method for recording file from the snapshot. You can see there have three methods. Uh, first of all, of course, you can select some file or folder from the snapshot and recover it. And secondly, you can also clone a snapshot into a new volume or long. And this method uh, is especially useful when you need to create some test environment using the same volume or SKS long. And finally, uh, the most important one is called snapshot revert, which is using our snapshot technology in the block level to quickly change the file system link and allow you to quickly recover your data, even the volume or SKS long is very big, for example, 300 gigabytes. Okay. okay. So here, let's just go into the demo to see how uh, we can manage the snapshots. Sure. So you see, this is uh, the demo environment I prepared, and I can first, firstly, I open the storage snapshots, and I check this snapshot feature. Okay, so firstly, you can see all, all we have provide a very uh, easy to use interface. For example, you can see a different storage core because the volume or long have different snapshot attached status. You can all see them here. This storage core contain uh, not only just local snapshot but also remote snapshot. So it's on the full protection. And you can also see that in our storage snapshot, uh, you can see we have the different snapshot already been taken inside those two uh wow. buttons. yes and nextly uh let's just open file station you can see that here we have integrated this snapshot icon so for example if i want to operate a snapshot i can simply open using a snapshot manager and demo mm -hmm. and i can open this snapshot manager and i can easily set a schedule upon this button about how long you can take snapshots so here so let me close this firstly. And then let me first taking a snapshot. Okay, you can see, let me take this snapshot. It will just take a while for the snapshot to be taken. Okay, you can see the snapshot can be taken right away. And then right, let's just see last. 
close this. And so here, because I already take a snapshot, I was starting to delete some file. So first of all, I just delete those pictures. Yes. Okay. So those pictures are now permanently uh, deleted. But still, I can easily recover the snapshot from all using a bio station. Mm -hmm. Just let the last snapshot I take. And here you can also see those pictures. So I can easily use this by station to restore file. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So because the restore is complete, and let me look, open this demo. You can okay. see all the pictures. They're all back. Yes, they're all back. And next, I want to demo how we can use a snapshot reverb uh, function. So here we can see that this folder contain uh, not only just picture, but also two, maybe uh, a gb of data is. Uh, uh, quite huge. And then I want to delete all those data completely. Yes. Okay. So after I delete all those data, I open a snapshot manager. In here, I want to not use the restore function. I want you to use this revert value snapshot feature. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let me click local revert. Okay, here we just uh, starting to revert this volume and see how long because before it can recover all those data, including not only the picture but also to uh, about uh, a gigabyte of file. Mm -hmm. So you can see the progress run very fast, and let's just keep uh, seeing how long before all those files can be recovered. I think it's now already ninety percent, so maybe shorter than twenty seconds. Well, like this now. Well, you can already see the background now. Yeah. Now all the file has already been restored yeah. uh, and been revert from the snapshot to this folder. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, just a simple demonstration on how our snapshot can be used with Doge and snapshot and file station to recover the file. Yeah. Let's go back to the slides. Okay. And after we talk about the functions and how can we use all the snapshot function. And the next topic is the space allocation and several of our advanced snapshot functions. Well, there are four uh, that we are talking about today. Uh, the space allocation best practice for snapshot, and the second is okay for Windows user. Um, I have been a Windows user for like, I don't want to tell you my age, but basically <laughs> over 20 years. <laughs> and I'm not really sure how the previous versions can you know, like be done. And the third part is the snapshot share folder. We all know snapshot, but when snapshot comes with share folder, what is that concept? So Ripple will also let us know. And the last thing is another new thing, right? Called snapshot yes. agent. So how can snapshot agent help us for all the snapshot functions? Well, let's check on that. Okay. So here I want to describe more deeply about uh, snapshot and why we call our, our volume snapshot is a better solution. Mm -hmm. uh, the major reason is that snapshot is not all benefits. It can sometimes, sometimes causing trouble. For example, because I show you this complex chart to let you know that, uh, when we have the, when we delete file, which is, uh, being, uh, data block is being forced by the snapshot. Actually, uh, the file still uh, keep lo all the space and the space not releasing because the snapshot is still there. So this may cause some problem if you have your snapshot inside uh, be at the same place with all your data because sometimes you just cannot identify whatever the volume is for because of snapshot or still can write more data. Mm -hmm. And this is why I call our snapshot design is a conservatory but a complete solution. Because although we might have, uh, we might can only provide this national number compared to the other uh, storage vendor, but we uh, have identified this uh, drawback of snapshot, and we want to make sure that our all of our users' NAS service can be continued even uh, the snapshot has been enabled. So here it's just a simple observation in la in our QT system, our snapshot reserve time is by default seven days to maintain a healthy recycle. Mm -hmm. uh, Chart. And while on the other hand, uh, our major, uh, another storage vendor and also our computer, computer, uh, DSN, which provides initial multiple days forever. So we believe that this, uh, of course it can protect, provide a better protection, but, uh, it may sometimes also cause a problem. So why is the problem exactly is that, as you can see from chart, because the file is not actually deleted mm -hmm. until I delete a snapshot. 
and sometimes this will cause in your uh, system service or application service being stuck accidentally if you have not uh, carefully monitored how many snapshot space you already taken. So here we see that uh, even the uh, data is already been deleted by a file system because snapshot is not deleted. So in fact, the volume that contains some application data have already near full. And when it actually full, even IT manager can hardly recognize why is the reason that the service start because snapshots use space cannot be easily identified from the file system directly. Okay, so this is why we have emphasized our design concept is more controversial because mm -hmm. we want to make sure the service can continue. So what we have uh, developed to ensure the service can be continue, there are several ways. Uh, for example, in this chart, you can see that the right hand side, the gray uh, color in the bar chart, which means snapshot use space. Because we have uh, stored our snapshot in a storage pool instead of inside the volume, mm -hmm. uh, IT manager can easily identify the current snapshot space usage. Mm -hmm. And also, furthermore, uh, the IT manager can also enjoy the benefit that because we have uh, all the uh, uh, all the snapshot space are uh, using in search pool, so multiple volume and multiple line can actually share the same space to store snapshot. And finally, when the volume or line identify identify the storage space is about to fall, it also become a activity de detect the storage pool status and change the the own status to a read-delete mode, which you can refile, delete mm -hmm. file, but you cannot write more file. And we have specially designed this warning status, or is to help our user understand how many space is national currently use, and why is the reason if a service start it is because of a snapshots. Okay. And further on, we have a reference to the time machine design to provide a small snapshot space management function, which means that uh, by default, this function is on, is that when the storage space, poor space is not enough, user uh, can decide to let the system automatically recycle the older snapshot. And so with this design, we believe that IT manager and personal user can uh, have uh, can easily enable snapshot without to worry about uh, storage space might become full and application service may start at accidentally. Of course, for people who want to enjoy uh, absolute protection, they can also turn off this uh, smart snapshot request cycle system to ensure that snapshot will still uh, be kept inside the storage pool, even the storage space falls. falls, falls. And furthermore, because uh, despite we provide this national member, we still have the function that allow user to easily uh, to decide whatever when we take a new snapshot and the snapshot limitation is reached, user can easily decide to let the newer snapshot to uh, replace the older snapshot without la the snapshot protection, uh, without the need to start the snapshot protections. Mm -hmm. So here, after seeing all those design in our QT system, it's still quite important to let uh, our users know that if you want to enable snapshot function, you should uh, carefully plan your storage for space. So how to do this? It's just, you just need to reserve more space for the storage board to store the snapshot. Mm -hmm. And when you create a sick volume or a sick lung, just allocate this space a little by little. When you require just expand the volume or lung, and of course, if in the beginning you did not, uh, you, you have allocated all the space to a thick volume, for example, many home users did that. Okay. For this, we believe we have introduced a new resize volume wizard in 4.3.5, uh, which to briefly discuss is that you can easily uh, decrease the allocated space of your volume or volume when required. So this allows you, even if you mistakenly uh, allocated the whole storage pool space to a volume in 4.3.5, you can easily reduce your size and recover, uh, release more storage space for snapshot protections. So some base practice for allocating space inside QNS and to using snapshot is first of all, uh, you can separate your uh, volume into multiple volume and only take snapshot on the volume that you need. Mm -hmm. So this helps you to uh, save in more space to keep snapshot. And secondly, when using a uh, stick volume or long, ensure to allocate space 
space step by step and not allocating them all the storage pool into a single step volume at the beginning. And if you are required, if the space is in separate, of course you can convert a state volume into a thing to re, uh, release the base or using our latest uh, a volume resize wizard to reduce the size of a state volume. And finally, you can also use in snapshot replica to uh, let your snapshot be stored at a remote NAS instead mm -hmm. of local NAS, which help you to release the space of your production size. So after introduce our outside of volume snapshot, here is some advanced uh, feature or change that we want to introduce to you. And first of all is that in 4.3.5, our snapshot architecture has also been changed. Before, if you have using SAP patch with a snapshot, when taking snapshot, the system will inform you to uh, you may need to flash all your data from SAP cache into the uh, storage port. Firstly, but now in 4.3.5, because we identify that you sometimes may need to take more than half an hour to flush the data from SD cache, and it may not be a drop pack for users who want to take snapshot in high frequency, for example, mm -hmm. five minutes. We have now uh, integrated a, our exist storage port structure with the SD cache. So when a snapshot is being taken, SD cache with data will also be recovered, will be contained. So users don't need to worry about uh, flushing data into the SD cache. We uh, high frequency snapshots. Uh, nextly, we will also here specially introduce how user can use Windows preferred versions with our snapshot uh, feature. Uh, because we know that some IT manager may wish that uh, to allow all normal user can also have the power to recover snapshot when they want it. Because we know snapshot is such an easy function that uh, user can also use it to come down uh, by version control. Mm -hmm. So now uh, in before versions, we already provide this uh, Windows preferred version as snapshot folder, which users can access with even not going to QTS, for example, among the uh, shared folder with Zemba or CIFS mm -hmm. or LP in the Mac OS. And right now we will provide more, for example, IT manager can also decide to disable this Windows preferred version then we we'll want to, to fully control uh, how users can use in the snapshots. Mm -hmm. So here, let's just in, enter the demo to see how user can use in the Windows preferred ver version. Sure. Okay, so now you see that in this NAS, we have a demo volume and folder, which already contains some snapshots. And here in this NAS, I have a uh, this uh, demo folder as a uh, shared using Simba. And you see that when I select one file and the with this restore previous version, mm -hmm. I already see that it can already contain some changes that already been recorded yes. in the snapshots. So for example, let me just open this file. So this is a simple coding file, is coding some function, but you see that the function print one and print three is is not be including in this uh, no file. And in our cooperative work stage, this may sometimes, uh, this is just similar in the uh, error that we will find because some people already modify the code file so the other people cannot run it. So this is a very simple scenario. So if I already cannot run this file, I can simply using this previous version to identify the other version of this code file. And for example, let me check this earlier version, mm -hmm. you can see that it actually contain the other function. So we have identified this is a MIDI file and we're just using a restore function mm -hmm. and click restore. Okay, so after restore this file, let, let me open it, open this file again, and you can see that all of this, uh, the correct code has been uploaded into this file. Yes. So user, after seeing this demo, you may want wondering how I know is that preferred version is coming from snapshots. So one thing about uh, Windows preferred version is that it's very smart. So besides, although I here I have 18 snapshot in the preferred version, as you see, it only lists the snapshot that contain the file that has been modified. So because I modified the file four times, so it only show uh, the four snapshot that file has been modified. But here, I want to show you another feature that we will introduce in uh, uh, our snapshot is we can also close this Windows preview version. We can, uh, this also uh, is uh, to demonstrate how we can know is that those preview version are coming from the snapshots. 
So here I just close this Windows Preview version and click Apply. Okay. After I click this Apply, uh, because I I am an IT manager who don't want user to control the snapshot itself, so I just using this option. And then after I click Apply, let me go back to this. You see that uh, it has become disconnect for some time because you need to uh, reconnect to the folder to contain all the latest mm -hmm. uh, setting. So let's just wait a few seconds because before the setting being applied. And let me go back again. So right now, let me just pre press this restore preferred version. Mm -hmm. You see there has no longer uh, preferred version being enabled because I have used this new function to disable the Windows preferred version without snapshots. I never, I never know there's a function like that. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so even IT manager have disabled this window of preferred version, a user can still, as you can see that here, mm -hmm. we have a recent snapshot folder, which user can still see all the snapshot file content. This is not limited to the Windows 10, but it can also be used on Mac OS or the other system. Mm -hmm. But still, as a my IT manager, I can also disable this uh, recent snapshot folder for to prevent user from re recover data itself. Okay. But of course, all these functions are decided by IT manager more whether they want user to use a snapshot function or not. Okay, so this is uh, this part of demo. Let's go back to the slides. Okay. So uh, the next topic will be talking about the second advanced function, the snapshot share folder. Well, basically we know that snapshot and we know share folder, but what is snapshot share folder? Okay, so here uh, snapshot share folder is a feature that we specially develop for users who want to enjoy uh, a very fast snapshot reverse speed while using the share folder at the same time. Because we know that the reverse uh, function is applied on the volume. Mm -hmm. And if your volume contain many share folder, but you only want to revert a single share folder, it may, it may cause some problem. Yes. So what we have doing this by we have allow user to easily create a share folder that has paired to a dedicated volume mm -hmm. inside file station. So using this function, you can see that uh, the snapshot share folders can using the snapshot revert function without affecting uh, the other share folder share folder because mm -hmm. the other share folder are located in the other volume okay. and you can see that the bio restoring time of a uh, 300 uh, gigabit of file is very fast even faster than uh, restore the same file size but different folder uh, in the same volume you, see, you can see that the restore time can be reduced to about three to four minutes so this is snapshot share folder so it's like i take one folder and make it into like another volume so i can just take no snapshot to that volume which yes. is basically a, a share folder yes okay i got it so this is a easy function for user to quickly sell this architecture mm -hmm. and let's move to the next this is a more advanced snapshot agent is especially used for virtualization station or windows for uh, iSCSI service so here, because uh, today we just discussed the general concept, mm -hmm. so this function, we have a full application node on the website. And here, I just want to simply describe that uh, when our NAS is being using the Hyper-V or virtualization station, and our NAS need to take a snapshot, how can we ensure that our iSCSI launch snapshot can also include in the memories, uh, the data inside the memory of those VN when we take a snapshot? The answer is using snapshot agent. Okay. With snapshot agent, when the NAS need to take a snapshot, it's just called a snapshot agent, and snapshot agent call a Windows Hyper V or VMware's uh, vCenter to inform them to also flash the VNS data from RAM back into the iSCSI long. And in this case, we can create an application consists snapshot that have also including the VNS RAM's data. Okay, so about more detail about snapshot agent, uh, you can uh, find the uh, full application in our official website. Okay, so after the several of the advanced functions, now we'll go into the last part, which is a snapshot replica and the remote restore. Well, at this part, we also have three main features. The first one is the restore from the remote snapshot vault. Well, basically, um, I think that the, the current version that we can only restore the, the, the snapshot at, at the 
re remote snapshot NAS, right? But now we can uh, take the snapshot back to the local NAS and do the restore. And then the second is that we can now support the snapshot export and import. Why we need it? <clears throat> well, basically, uh, for the first time we do the snapshot or first time we do the snapshot replica. Well, according to the size of your uh, of your data, there will be uh, the, the bigger the size, the longer the time. So for some uh, occasion, we might need to do the export manually and then we can do the import manually. And the third part is that, okay, I have just mentioned that the, the, in first time, in the first snapshot replica time, so uh, that will be the three new features for the snapshot. So uh, let's talk about this. Okay, so here we will discuss a uh, concept about snapshot replica and mm -hmm. snapshot goal. So firstly, uh, I just want to show we you now why we have do this snapshot replica. Mm -hmm. uh, because we know that a lot of IT managers have concern about, also consider about the high and the long backup time when we, when we, when we need to back up a whole volume or ask us mm -hmm. long. Mm -hmm. So using Snapshot Replica, as you can see in the chart, it provides an easy way to back up a whole volume or long. In the first time, you still need to sync the whole volume or long into a more NAS. But later, uh, this Snapshot Replica task allows system to only transfer the snapshot from a source NAS mm -hmm. to remote NAS and when required, those uh, uh, snapshot in the remote NAS can use to recover your file or uh, ISCSI long in a source NAS. So this will provide a very fast and very practical solution for users who wish to back up the whole volume or ISCSI long. So here is just some term uh, snapshot replica. Of course, it's the term that used to describe the snapshot backup jar we run in the host NAS. While snapshot ball is the where we store the snapshot at a remote and destination, uh, destination NAS. And further, the snapshot ball can also be backup to the third NAS, which we call the backup snapshot ball. So here, uh, snapshot replica job, at least it requires two storage pool, one at source NAS and the other maybe at the source NAS at the same NAS or at a different NAS. And the snapshot ball will have a size that same as the source volume or as as long. Okay. So here is just some easy step because in uh, in our storage snapshot we have improved UI so user can easily find the snapshot replica job page in our storage snapshot and you just select the volume along he want and using a create a uh, snapshot replica job to easily and quickly identify a remote NAS and starting a replica job. Mm -hmm. So here we not only allow the whole process become very easy we also provide a complete uh, backup plan wizard for user to configure with. Uh, here, as you can see, that we have provided very flexible schedule. For example, user can decide to run the snapshot backup job at every Wednesday and every uh, Saturday. And furthermore, we provide multiple backup plan. For example, user can decide to uh, run the snapshot backup plan when uh, three or four local snapshots has been taken or run by a schedule, fixed schedule, or when the snapshot replica job is run, taking a new snapshot and sync that new snapshot to the remote NAS. Okay. Those options allow user to deciding uh, to have a consistent snapshot in both source and remote NAS. And so now after discuss the backup, let's discuss some new concepts. But first, in uh, this year, we have specifically promote the 10 gig solution because uh, we know IT manager and maybe some advanced home user want to have a fast backup solution. And here, because in this year, this, we also uh, provide our first uh, QNet first 10 gig NAS, 10 gig switch for user to quickly build a 10 gig environment to quickly uh, back up their volume or long to a remote NAS. And link in the 4.3.5 is very exciting for us to announce that we not only want to back out snapshot fastly, we also want user to recover data using this 10 gig network solution directly. So now in 4.3.5, we will provide a restore from remote snapshot ball function. Uh, although the term is very long, you can just see the screenshot to see that right now in our snapshot manager, user can not only see and restore file from the local snapshot, but also from the remote snapshot, which is located in another storage pool and another NAS. 
So we also support three types of restoring method for the remote snapshot bug restore, which you can see the user can select some file or select uh, the whole volume along to be using the clone to create new file along or refer the same volume along. This is uh, basically same as the local snapshot operation, but user can use all those three methods when uh, try to recover data from a remote snapshot vault. So here, let's just go into a demo to see how we utilize this uh, function in Tengi network, of course. Okay. So first of all, let's just open the file station. And here I want to delete the picture at one of the ISO file, which is about uh, or 4D it. or 5D. And let me also delete this file permanently. Okay. So then I open the snapshot manager. Okay, here I will show that I'm very curious and I also delete them all the local snapshots. So here I can only use the remote snapshot for recovery. So let me go to this remote NAS and here I can see the image file and the ISO file. I select them all and then I select restore, restore file. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, you can now see that the restoring is already start. Let me open the resource monitor to see the network is for C because right now I'm using a 10 D network. Okay. Okay, you can see that now it has uh, starting to recover the data from the remote NAS back to the source. And you can see that you can have uh, reach uh, maybe 115 megabyte per second. Yes. Yes. Uh, this oh, uh, still not the faster speed in our thinking network, but it should be fast enough for us to recover all this data yes, in a few so. seconds. So now you see the transfer is already complete. And let's close uh, this resource monitor and go back to this folder. Oh, okay, right. you can see no, that all this file has been recovered. Mm -hmm. And then here, the next thing I want to show you uh, is that uh, I want to uh, erase all the file again. Or oh, maybe I just, I don't need to erase this file. I just simply open this because we see that some file is, for example, the ISO file too, is disappeared. So there have maybe some problem in this folder. Here, I want to refer this volume snapshot directly to recover all the file. From local or from the... Yes, from the remote. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I want to recover all the files from remote because I accidentally also delete yeah. all my local snapshots. So here, I just using this refer file snapshot buttons. Mm -hmm. More refer. So here, uh, Leo has a special notification because even we have using the refer option mm -hmm. uh, is quite important for a user to know that because the whole volume will use in the network to transfer from the remote NAS back to the source NAS and you might need to take some time. And during this time, if the network has become error, uh, the refer will be stopped and user need to manually try again. Okay, so let's just input a password to confirm that we want to refer from the remote. Okay. You can see how the river mm -hmm. is already stuck. Let's open this storage snapshots. You can see how the remote remote river is already start and it program is now go to 100%. And let's open this remote NAS. This is a NAS where the snapshot vault is locating. You can see that it has a background test also showing that right now we have a from the source it has a requirement to recover the whole uh, snapshot from listeners. So right now we just let, because we have some, uh, a lot of maybe the whole volume 100 gigabits need to be transferred back. So we just let it run and continue to go back to our slide. Okay. Yes. But here we just show we have many different way to recover the data from a remote snapshot hole. Of course. Okay, so instead of all those methods using network, of course, if a user's network is quite, uh, not quite, a little bit slower, and we believe that Leo is still using a traditional way, for example, an external read device might still be a reliable option. So mm -hmm. here we also provide the snapshot export and import 
uh, feature, uh, this feature is very simple. User can just uh, export a snapshot into a re uh, external array device or a USB if it has big enough. Mm -hmm. And then user can use this snapshot image file to quickly uh, insert it back to the source NAS and use it to refer the source value for iSCSI on. So this help user to, even when the network is not stable or quite slow, user can still use this method to quickly recover the snapshot mm -hmm. from the remote NAS back to the source NAS. Okay. So we all those recovery option, uh, user can enjoy a multiple recovery uh, solution we are accumulating us. For example, if a user using a file server, of course, he can use the he can use the same way as our showing demo. He selects the PC file and restore them using the remote snapshot bowl. Mm -hmm. Or if a user using the iSCSI storage, he can revert the whole iSCSI run from remote snapshot bowl. Or using the snapshot clone function in the destination NAS and directly clone the uh, iSCSI run uh, at destination NAS and the iSCSI initiator to connect to the clone run. So here, uh, I, just want, I just want to emphasize again that in this year, we are QNAS Q switch, uh, which is uh, maybe can be your first tanky switch because it's really cheap. And you can use it to enjoy a business levels backup and restoring uh, solution to uh, dramatically reduce uh, the time you require your RTO for recovering your data. So here, uh, we are a uh, snapshot uh, backup and recover solution. Even SMB user can enjoy a business level backup and recover solution uh, because in 4.3.5, we have first enabled to let our model also su support snapshot, which user can, of course, use purchase an own base model uh, and using as a snapshot replica destination for the Intel or AMD NAS that is on the production side. And in 4.3.5, we further also allow uh, the snapshot at uh, loss, for example, S31S can also be quickly recovered from the destination NAS back, back to the source NAS mm -hmm. using the remote snapshot bowl uh, restoring a solution. So this basically, you say can acquire an enterprise level uh, backup and restore solution with just under budgets under uh, 1,000 USD dollars, USD. Okay, so if you user have considered uh, about a snapshot number, of course, they can further use our advanced storage feature. It's called VJBAR to mount the on base uh, models, iSCSI long to the host NAS as another storage pool. And why we do this? Because when we have using this solution, the RAM usage of the X, for example, S31X, is a uh, snapshot will actually using a host NAS RAM mm -hmm. uh, to keep all those snapshots. So this, even if your own base model can only support maybe, for example, a uh, 64 uh, snapshot because you only have a two gigabit of RAM, you can still use this VJBAR function to allow the NAS can support up to uh, 1,024 snapshot along with a uh, host uh, Intel or AMD based NAS with a VJBAR feature. Okay, so finally, user can further using the snapshot export function when they first uh, replica the volume or ask us long to a destination NAS. Because we know when you do snapshot replica job in the first time, the whole volume alone still need to transfer to a remote NAS and it may take some time. Mm -hmm. So using this uh, backup solution, user can insert a external device and select to let the first uh, backup to export uh, the volume or ISCS run into an external device and later on insert the external device to the destination NAS and continue the import and of course, central replica job. So here, the first long volume or long transfer and during has been skipped because we just use an external device and later just let the network to transfer uh, the small size snapshot. This can improve uh, the time required for uh, creating a central replica job with multiple backup sites. So finally, I just want to recap that snapshot replica compared to the other backup solution, for example, RTR and RSync snapshot replica is a more suitable solution to backup the whole volume and long because then most importantly, because we're starting to support the uh, restore a snapshot 
file from the remote snapshot ball. So user can usually uh, select the file he want to restore from the source nest directly or using the import and export uh, to recover the whole volume along even using the snapshot replica solutions. Okay. okay. So that will be all the main features we have as new things in the new snapshot in QTS 4.3.5. We have better RTO and now we have the space or quality management for you to choose when you are reaching the limitation for your uh, snapshot storage capacity. And now things, things you can easily uh, transfer your volume from thin and thick or you, we can expand and shrink the, the storage space for each of the volume. So it's now more flexible for you to uh, do the adjustment to your snapshot. And then we can now uh, do the snapshot also for the cache. So you don't have to worry about uh, the file might be missing when you are taking frequently snapshot, maybe uh, lower than each of the 30 minutes. And then we can now manually export and import the, the snapshot. So when you are doing your first snapshot replica, then you can just use the manual function to uh, lower the, the total time consumption, which uh, if you are, you know, like you have a lot of NAS and you are doing a huge job for the snapshot replica. So for the first time, you will need a lot of time. And also we can also photo restore the snapshot replica at your local site. So we don't have to worry about uh, the distance problem and then we support the multiple restore solutions and of course all of these are based on the 10 gig transmission speed so uh, we also provide you a very affordable Q switch which can support you like 12 port or 8 port all of them are combo port you can choose to use as a plus or use the RG45 and then uh, for the snapshot restoration we can now support the ICER to give you a higher speed than uh, the current function. So that will be all the things that we have. So uh, that is why we say that Tunet is your best choice because we keep hearing the voices from the market. So we have keep uh, improved ourselves and make some new things from the user interface to the functions that we heard from the market. So let's go back to the live. So that will be the new things that we bring you for the QTS 4.3.5, the snapshot function. And thank you again, we hope to give us such a, a clear demonstration and information. So if you like our video or you want to see more uh, of the slides, you can go to live.qnap.com and, and find this video. Uh, you just type the keyword 4.3.5 and you can see the video down there and you just click and download the PowerPoint and you can enjoy and if you want to study more. So uh, also, if you like our video, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and we will keep bringing you more and more videos. So keep your live broadcast. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.